All right, once you have the PostgreSQL extension installed, you'll see this little elephant appears at the bottom of your toolbar. When you select that, you'll be able to add a new database connection by clicking the plus icon here. This will start a series of prompts that you can fill out to describe the attributes of the database that you're going to connect to. First, you'll see the host name, which in our case, we'll want to be localhost. Uh, next, we will be asked for the PostgreSQL username we want to authenticate as. In my case, I'm using the uh, username that corresponds to my computer's user account. This is the default user that the Mac Postgres app configures by default. This is also what happens if you use Homebrew to install that user is created by default. Whatever username uh, you've created within Postgres is what you'll fill in here. And if you haven't done anything special, it'll be the same as your computer's username. After that, you'll be prompted to enter the password for that user's account. In my case, this is blank and works because the user that is automatically created when you install Postgres will have a username matching your computer's user account and not it won't have a password by default. So in order to set a password for user account, you would need to log in to the Postgres command line application using the Postgres user, uh, also with no password, and change the password uh, using a SQL query. Uh, for now, let's keep going. Next, the port number uh, is going to default to 5432. It sometimes can be 5433 on WSL, for example. Uh, next, we will be asked to choose between using a secure connection and a standard connection. When we're connecting to a remote database, which we also can do from this extension, we'll want to use a secure connection. But since we're connecting to our local DB here on a private network, using a standard connection is fine. Next, we're prompted to choose which database we want to display here. So if we select show all databases, then we'll get to see all Postgres databases that have been created by our user account on our machine. We can also add connections one at a time if we only want to show the databases related to this application, for example. And that means that this does mean we're not going to have to manually go in and add connections uh, to the database every time we open a new window like we did with the SQLite Explorer. Finally, we are asked to name the database connection we're creating. This is the name that's going to show up when we click on the elephant in the sidebar. So we can access databases related to this database connection. I'm going to call this localhost databases here, just in case I want to add connections to remote databases later on. After we've gone through these steps, we'll see that localhost databases appears within the sidebar and we're able to collapse and expand these databases to view the tables, columns, and types. Uh, but we don't have that play button anymore uh, to click on uh, to see the table contents. Uh, instead, we can control click on one of these tables uh, to see a context menu with uh, some options that we can choose. So we can choose select and then run select top 1000, and that will give us a table within VS Code that shows the top 1000 rows in that table. And unlike the SQLite extension, however, we have mul we have the ability to have multiple windows open at once, allowing us to view the contents of multiple tables at the same time if we use a split screen within the workspace.